So last year, companies earned $14 billion worth of cashback rebates by digitally transforming their accounts payable department. So I'm going to talk about uh, digital transformation for accounts payable today, um, something that I thought was lagging sorely behind a lot of other departments inside of businesses. So before I start talking, is anyone here in finance or accounting in a business? OK, so I got one, two, two people. Um, so most of you guys were probably really more intrigued with the last speaker. Um, because they, he was talking more your talk, but some of the stuff that I might talk to you about today might help lead you down the path to being a company hero um, in the not so distant future because digital transformation um, should occur for businesses much more rapidly than people may think it should. So in the world today, hang on, am I working? Yep. As consumers, we live in a completely digital economy. We've We've digitized everything from our banking and internet banking to using applications for um, making payments and not carrying credit cards anymore. We have um, direct um, transfers of funds all over the place. And you know, billions and billions of dollars are transacted without the use of any paper in the consumer world. I don't know the last time anybody potentially wrote a check in, um, in, a, in, a, in a consumer business um, transaction. But for businesses, it's like it's uncharted territory. Like companies think they're going where no man has gone before because the paper processes work for them. Um, recently, Goldman Sachs in 2018 um, did, a, did a report that stated that companies are spending $2.7 trillion dollars on processing invoices and making payments in a year. Um, that's just ridiculous. And probably no one here in the room really understood that. But most businesses today still transact using paper. Invoices are mailed. Those, mail, those invoices are received and then routed around companies. We call it pushing them around, getting them approved. They're finally sent back to accounts payable where checks are actually printed, they're put into the mail, and then they're sent out to the recipient. Then those invoices are actually filed and kept for auditing purposes. And that's pretty typical for most businesses. And you might think, you know, well, why when sales is automated? I've heard people talking about salesforce.com. I heard Melissa talking earlier about an Oracle upgrade where they've probably also um, automated their marketing, they've automated HR, operations are running on an ERP system, but yet paper still besieges the accounts payable department. And then accounts payable goes even further and they create more paper from the paper to pay the bills that came in. So it's really ridiculous. Um, but that is indeed the world that is in, in corporate world. In the corporate world, if a business wasn't started before, let's say, 2010, most of these processes are just baked in, and that's how they are today. So for a little education for you guys, 45% um, of B2B payments are still made on paper checks. That's billions and billions of checks being issued um, a year. Only 35% are going by ACH, which is direct deposit, electronic funds transfer, and that is because you have to be able to collect a company's bank account and routing number instructions. You have to be able to secure it. Then you have to actually be able to deliver that payment to your bank where the bank then withdraws the funds from your bank account and deposits them into their bank account. There's a lot of technology involved in that. So only 35% of businesses are issuing ACH payments, and that's probably larger businesses who have um, gone about solving that problem for themselves. 13% um, are going on cards now. Um, some of you guys may be familiar with purchasing cards, which pay cash back to company, cash back rebates to companies. There are also virtual card um, applications also, which are better than a purchasing card for B2B transactions that are 
are going to transpire from a business, from one business to another, because they are unique card numbers assigned from a payer directly to a payee for a specific dollar amount. So they're incredibly secure, and they offer a lot more benefits from a security standpoint, if you're thinking back to the original presentation from this morning, um, that, that would help the company retain security over that, that payment. And then there's still 7% of payments going on wire transfers. So uh, my next slide is just a funny one because this, in some ways, could be an accounts payable department um, in, a world, in the world today. Um, you just put a computer in place of the typewriter, but really paper processes are still basically running um, all accounts payable. So the way that it works in most companies today, I just described, an invoice is mailed, it arrives, it is then routed around and finally approved. We, we left all that routing off because this would be not the large intestines, it would also show the small intestines of accounts payable. Then a file, when, once that approved invoice gets put into accounts payable, they generate all the payments that are actually going to go out and they put them into a payment file they run them through their accounting or their ERP system, and they send those, those checks to the printer. And it's probably a very secure process for them, and they have a lot of control over who's approving the payments once it's even in accounts payable, and who's releasing the payments, and high dollar checks are being actually hand signed potentially by the CEO if they're over a million dollars, or, or what you know, different companies have different um, ways that they do it. Um, then those checks either, get folded and stuffed by the accounts payable department or they go to the mail room where they get folded, they get put into the envelopes, they get put into the uh, postage meter and they're finally sent out to the postal service. Then they're received and then that information has to get keyed into the accounts receivable system and the cash is actually applied. And, the, and we didn't put on there about the, the check actually being deposited and all of that, but, but, but this is a, a laborious process. But it results in these stacks and stacks of checks going out weekly from businesses. Um, but the reason why is because all you need to make a business payment is the company's name and their mailing address, and you can pay them. That's it. But in order to pay them by an electronic method, you have to have additional data, and you have to have an additional way to deliver your payment to them in a secure fashion. So what we would like to see, well, well, what we are seeing is, hang on a second, I think I went too fast. Let me back up a second. Okay. After automation, and when a company like OnPay Solutions gets involved, we can put about 60, more than 60% of payments over to ACH. Um, it, when businesses work with the right kind of partner, and don't take it upon themselves to do all of this. Um, they can collect all that information and get payments up and running very quickly. Um, card payments, those virtual card payments can then um, take 25% of the burden off of the staff, and that can result in cashback rebates being paid to the company. Um, checks can go down to only 10%, and then those wires are usually about 2%. So what will end up happening is we're seeing the decline um, over the years of check payments coming down from 75% back in just you know, 20, 2004 down to only 45% only last year. So that, that is a big change, but there's still billions of checks being transacted every week. Um, there is a growth in the card payment area, which we talked about a little bit ago, or I talked about a little bit ago, and that's because they are becoming more secure, and they are also providing an, an opportunity for companies to earn cash back on their accounts payable spend. So that is the fastest growing payment technology right now. So last year, companies earned $14 billion worth of cashback rebates by digitally transforming their accounts payable department. And that's huge. Um, OnPay Solutions alone issued more than a billion dollars worth of, of virtual card accounts payable payments to payees 
um, on the couple of hundred clients that we have that are using them. So that, that's an enormous opportunity for companies to pay for other types of digital transformation and definitely pay for this type of transformation. On the B2B payments timeline, I've got a couple of, of dates here worthy of noting. Um, in 2017 was the first time checks actually surpassed, um, or actually digital payments were surpassed checks as the primary method of payments for B2B, but there's still millions and trillions of them being issued now. Um, by 2022, virtual card payments are expected to account for more than a trillion dollars worth of transactions um, in that year. And then by 2025, even new types of payment technologies are expected to be much more prevalent. Um, RTP payments, which, is, which stands for real-time payments, money actually moving the moment somebody needs it. Um, cryptocurrencies and other new technologies and, and, and payment, te payment platforms are developing and are going to start being um, much more prevalent in the B2B space. And by 2030, so we're, we're talking a, a quite a ways away still, another decade away will be when checks are virtually obsolete and used only on demand when required um, for some sort of a, a, a necessary payment at the moment. But in the digital age, what will happen if a company does choose to go digital is they'll be able to automate the incoming invoices and digitize those and digitize their payments. So they're going to start eliminating the paper from their departments. That's going to result in giving them some visibility to data real time and also give them more productivity out of the staff that they have in their department. The staff in the department right now is probably doesn't even have the time to analyze and spend um, um, time reporting on what's being spent and understanding <coughs> which vendors are being paid the most frequently or the most dollars or which ones, if they are um, issuing electronic payments, um, what the payment mix is with them because they're really too bogged down in the paper processes that they're handling right now. So why change? Well, there's, there's the need to get rid of the time and the, and the effort that's associated with it. Um, but there's also an incredible amount of increased security with B2B payments um, um, when you go electronic. Um, check fraud um, is still a very, very prevalent um, fact in the, in the B2B business world. And um, in 2018, it was $15.1 million or $15.1 billion worth of, of loss was, was found in an organization or in, in the US. Um, and invoice and email fraud is also growing very rapidly. I don't know how many of you guys read the article in the Wall Street Journal earlier this week, but there was a, a great article about um, an email fraud that was committed where someone hacked into a CEO's email and had his assistant wire money and he lost $450,000 out of his personal line of credit um, because of, some, of, of invoice and email fraud. Um, there's also more cost efficiency in, in a secure digital payment. So manually processing paper invoices and checks can cost businesses anywhere from, on the low end, $3 a check, and on the high end, up to, it says 15 here, I'd say $20 a check because of all of the processes and the, and the labor, and people are nodding their heads. They know this. It's, it's a very, very laborious task. And then there's more control. There's a lot more visibility into, into the data that is available um, from an electronic payment versus what's available if you issue a payment on paper. There's a lot less, um, there's a lot less errors. There, there are more accuracies in reporting, and there's a lot better relationship that you can form with your vendor. There's a lot less vendor frustration because 
data and the visibility to the payment, why it was made and when it was made and how it was made is more visible when you've done everything digitally versus if you've done it on paper. So I put a little um, blurb here from off of our website. We, we worked with a company recently that, it, that has been on their own homegrown um, ERP system or um, a business system that they've been using. I don't even think it was called an ERP when they created it. Um, they needed to find a solution that could work without needing to do a massive upgrade of their technology. And they were able to work with a company like ours to help them automate their payments and become electronic. So we took them to an ACH platform as well as a virtual card platform. And they estimated in the first year that they were um, able to raise um, more than 100, or they were able to earn back more than $150,000 in doing that. So the annual impact of automation is huge. Um, and I'm, I've given a little, get the slide to fully load for you. On a company that's about a $30 million company, you can make more than $100,000 impact by reducing the cost and bringing back in cash rebates from those, um, pay, those bill payments that are already going to be made. So the AP automation process includes converting paper to electronic, integrating into your existing system, maintaining full control of your cash flow, providing remittance data for your payers, which then provides improved vendor relationships. So how it can work? We've got all the steps for invoice automation outlined on this slide here. This, the invoices, the inbound invoices can be scanned. All that data can be extracted and put into the workflow tool that actually then begins the process of GL coding. Um, so all of those manual processes are stopped. Um, routed, the routing of things through different departments are all done digitally, which is fantastic. Um, the workflow management approvals all get handled digitally as well, um, resulting in the payment being sent back to accounts payable for issuance um, electronically as well. On the payment automation side, that payment file can be created just the way that it is right now out of the accounting or ERP system that the company is using. That payment then gets sent to a company like ours bumped up against a vendor marketplace where we can tell who can be paid by ACH instructions because we've already got them, or who will receive um, uh, a credit card or vir a virtual card payment. The payments are processed. The money moves directly out of the existing bank accounts because the best companies that are doing this are not taking control of the funds and issuing on behalf of the company. They're actually allowing the companies to connect directly to their existing bank accounts. And then a reconciliation file is sent back after the payments are cleared. So there is a little bit more to an electronic payment. That may be one of the things that's stopping people from doing it. Back to Melissa's presentation from earlier today about that mindset. Um, there are the, the people, and people are nodding their heads right now, you know, the mindset of making a, t a change like this, especially in finance and accounting, can be very daunting. Um, but the results can be huge. Um, it allows the department to actually focus more on the things that they probably should be focusing on, which is more the vendor relationships and the, and the manner in which they're processing the payments. They'll increase their security and reduce their um, email fraud by more than 90%. They'll also begin generating revenue, which we talked about a little bit related to those um, virtual card payments. And they'll have better visibility into their cash flow and they'll still have complete control of their funds. So the, one, of the, one of the blocks or roadblocks up there that people may feel is really stopping them from digitally transforming is that they would lose control. And what I'm telling you today is that you don't have to lose control. The company can still be 100% um, in control of their funds. And the transformation doesn't have to be a years-long painful 
drudgery, <laughs> like what the uh, Acosta people sound like they've been going through, but it can be something that can be done in under 90 days if it's done the right way.